I've always wanted to find out uh, how nature works and how these amazing chemicals that we see and that we use all the time are made in nature. That's driven me for a very long time. When I started my research career as an independent scientist over 30 years ago, we had no idea, none, how these compounds were made. And uh, now we've come to understand on a genetic level, on a enzyme, protein enzyme level, uh, how they are put together. So the proteins or enzymes are remarkable molecular machines and they take very simple compounds and they stitch them together and then modify them uh, to make very elaborate drugs. We've been working with a group at UBC on a compound called neopetrosiamide, which comes from a sponge in Papua New Guinea. And this is a compound that uh, we believe may prevent cancer metastasis, uh, spreading of cancer cells to, from the original site of origin to a new place. And it looks very promising, but we don't understand anything about how it works. And so we're making labeled derivatives so we can see how it interacts with cells, where it goes, what it does. Uh, we're also very interested in a peptide that um, uh, seems to be orally active. You can take it by eating it. Uh, in contrast to many peptides, it comes from the venom of the Brazilian rattlesnake. And uh, it is an analgesic. It kills pain. Mm -hmm. And an orally active analgesic that is not addictive and tolerance apparently doesn't develop uh, this seems to be a very interesting possibility for uh, patients, treatment of patients who have cancer. The University of Alberta has been a tremendous place to work. I have excellent colleagues. They're all world-class researchers in their own right. Our support staff are absolutely outstanding, and they really provide the support and the access to special techniques. So, for example, nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy, Dr. Alban Otter, He's a fantastic director of that laboratory and he's outstanding experts working with him so that my students are trained by those people to use those instruments. Uh, if the experiments are especially complicated, then they are done for us by the laboratory. Another laboratory would be the Mass Spectrometry Laboratory where uh, Dr. Randy Whittle is in charge. And again, he has uh, four or five people working with him who are really world experts in the various techniques. They help do the experiments. They help analyze the results, uh, they suggest new experiments that could be done to help us understand what we're working with. So they are just an amazing group. And then we have the shops, glass shop and machine shop that we rely on very heavily to build equipment or repair equipment. So uh, these support laboratories are what make Alberta what it really is as a place to work. Absolutely essential. Recognitions are always very nice. They're sort of the icing on the cake, and of course one is uh, proud and complimented and also humbled when one looks at the least list of previous recipients of various kinds of mm -hmm. awards which I've been fortunate to get. But I think that it's not the driving force. The driving force is the curiosity and the interest um, of the work itself. And then this is stuff, recognitions is stuff that just comes in as a result of that. Mm -hmm. I think if one works for recognition, uh, it's, it'll burn you up. Being a member of the Royal Society may help attract graduate students from the United Kingdom, and there have been several who have approached me recently, mm -hmm. and maybe also postdoctoral fellows. I think that graduate students across Canada will uh, come here, and if they're interested in our work, they'll join our group, or perhaps they'll join another group. Sometimes graduate students come nominally to work with me, but then end up working with one of my colleagues and doing a great job there instead, and that's fine. Working with John is, a, is an enjoyable experience. He allows you to really grow as uh, a researcher, to develop new ideas and new techniques, and as well as uh, allows you to develop as a person. One of John's most endearing characteristics is his enthusiasm with, uh, with research. Uh, he wakes up in the morning and says, I love, being I love coming to work and I, this is where I want to be and this is probably his dream. No, I would think so. He is caring, he is interested, he is enthusiastic. He always looks out for our best interests. And he also uh, is very honest and will tell, tell us what we need to hear. He's private in the fact that he doesn't like to brag or gloat about his accomplishments. Like I, I, I haven't really seen him ever do that. John just lets his, um, uh, lets his career speak for itself and he doesn't have to say anything about it. Obviously, if one is reasonably successful, uh, there are offers from other universities in Europe and the United States to move and become a faculty member there. But I've never really seriously considered them. I mean, I've taken a look, but I've never seriously considered them because of the environment that we have here and the opportunities that there are for doing research here.